Hello, welcome. Um, today we're going to talk and let me share about Moana. So let me share my screen and let's get in there and make myself invisible. Welcome. Today we're going to uh, talk about Moana. So today's lecture is called Moana, Daughter of the Chief and Polynesian Invisibility, which I wrote for the new book that just came out, um, cast the new casting of the Disney princesses. So if you're interested in that, um, feel free to get that book. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Moana, one of Disney's uh, most recent uh, uh, cartoons that was a global sensation. Moana means ocean. Certainly by now, there has not been a lot of, of Pacific Island representation. So it's kind of in a sense, this article, this chapter is about, yeah, it's really good visibility for Polynesian stories, actors, culture, and the environment. But upon further examination, the entire, in the entirety of the film, including commercial marketing, plot, and history, share some prominent elements that cannot be seen. So let's talk about the visible. Well, you know, in making this uh, uh, global sensation smash animation, they, they brought something called the, the Oceanic uh, Trust, Story Trust, where they brought in uh, experts, professors, uh, Polynesian um, uh, co cultural experts, people from the area, and they all, like all these people came together and they formed something called the Oceanic Story Trust. So um, what happened is they went all over uh, Pacific Islanders uh, Islands and they, and they looked for stories that could best represent um, this story of the people, right? So what they did is they got a lot of ancestral narratives and they kind of borrowed it, mostly Pacific, mostly Polynesian, and they kind of like put it all together into one. And many of the actors were of the Pacific Islander descent. Now, what makes invisible is that actually, even though, yes, they're trying their best to be culturally, um, culturally competent, what's invisible is actually the, the same people who do all the Disney animations, so the producers, directors, screenwriters, were all longtime well-known Disney classic names. And, and again, those were of mostly Anglo descent, Anglo male descent, okay? And another thing that's very invisible is it's not exactly Pacific music, right? It's kind of like, like they call it Hamiltonized, you know, uh, Miranda, uh, who, you know, was star of Hamilton. He was one of the singers and it's like Disney-fied. So it's not exactly Polynesian music, right? It's kind of uh, transformed. So this lecture is in four parts. The first part talks about how Moana boasts Pacific Islander visibility while simultaneously rendering some Pacific Islander stories invisible, okay? So yes, it's great. Some of the actors are part Polynesian, but big invisibility that they did not mention in, in the cartoon animation is that yes, they didn't mention that the U.S. Uh, actually colonized Hawaii and Pacific Island nations through settler colonialism. Settler colonialism wins when you forcibly uh, take over a country and you slowly, your, native, your, your population actually kills, maims, or destroys the native population and you slowly settle it. Now, one good example is when the British came over to the United States and, and um, committed genocides against Native Americans. So that is a form of settler colonialism. Okay, so in this case, yes, Hawaii did not want to be part of the United States, so it was forcibly settled, and that's a big issue in the age mark studies because a lot of times when they did that, they brought over laborers, and the laborers tend to be actually Filipino, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and those people actually settled it and spread, and you can see that now um, those uh, those those original farm workers um, are in positions of power as well as the Anglo Americans who took over uh, Hawaii. But if you look at the actual uh, Hawaiians, by every measure, they're not doing as well as the other groups. So again, the movie definitely doesn't mention that. Something that. Uh, like three big erasures they have is a spatial erasure, okay? They really don't talk about where the Pacific Islander is, uh, islands are, and you know, how much it encompasses and how diverse it is, right? In the land and the people. Another thing is racial erasure. We, you know, we live in this like black, white kind of binary and actually not everyone in America <laughs> uh, is black or white. And so, and in even Polynesian culture, there's so many different types of Polynesian cultures, right? That it's completely erased, right? 
Obviously, a big one is political erasure, right? There is a movement in Polynesia, particularly in Hawaii, to actually separate uh, from the United States, and they are very much against colon settler colonialism, right? So all the, uh, the East Asians, uh, including the Southeast Asians, the Filipinos who immigrated there and settled there, they would want them gone. And so none of this is talked about in the, in the, the film, and this is what's really going on. So one great thing is the actors. All the actors and the singers, they all uh, had some sort of Polynesian or Pacific Islander background. For example, one example is Dwayne Douglas Johnson. Now you, but you probably know him as The Rock, right? So he's a descendant of Samoan chiefs, African-American, Canadian. He is a mix of many characters and all the, all the main cast members, except for one, it was, are of some sort of Pacific Islander descent. So the second part of this chapter talks about environmentalism and Pacific Islander life in context that depoliticizes it. For example, yes, it's great. Uh, Moana is about uh, climate change, yes. And, but what really is important about climate change is climate change is caused by humans, us, okay? And what is not talked about in the film is actually climate change is really affecting Hawaii right now. It's actually destroying a lot of this land, a lot of destruction, and there's a lot of global warming. It's not really great. It's actually quite detrimental to Hawaiian economy because it actually relies so much on, on tourism to survive. So again, that's something that's not really mentioned in the film. So on one hand, they're trying to be progressive, but on the other hand, what's really happening in Hawaii is quite tragic. The third part of the chapter talks about Moana as the daughter of the village chief. So you can pause it here if you like. You can read like, you know, what the different types of Disney characters are. And I'll just do the first one. Oh, um, Sleeping Beauty. Her burgeoning sexuality is a threat to another woman, so she's killed. Her only asset is physical beauty, so that saves her from in the end. And then, is that, who is that? Is that Belle? I don't know. Actually, the Belle's on, on to the right. Uh, on the right second. Uh, sl sl saves a prince's life with her only asset, her sexuality. So if you want to zoom into that, it's like kind of funny. So again, if you look at Moana, she's not a typical princess, right? She says, she sings uh, better, I am Moana, Song of My Ancestors, performed by Rachel House. And she sings, I am the daughter of the village chief. She is the daughter of the village chief. So she's not a classic princess in many senses. Now, Moana also fights for herself, okay? And she fights for her village without any curses or magical, uh, magical hands, right? Or uh, tripping birds, right? Uh, so again, she's really powerful, very strong. She's uh, dark complected, okay? So again, very uh, strong. And she, so she's not the typical princess. So the last part of this essay talks about selling Moana. So did you know that you can actually dress up as a Polynesian for uh, Halloween? I'm gonna make this clear. Don't be racist. <laughs> uh, if you dress up as another race, um, it's called cultural appropriation, right? It's it's terrible. It's racist. Don't do it. So in this case, they're selling the Maui costume. So these actual uh, tattoos have huge significance, right? Sometimes you attain a certain level, and you get a, you have the right to get another tattoo, right? That depicts a certain thing. Uh, in this case, people are just wearing these random tattoos, like they're like not important, but they are, okay? So again, don't do that. So that's what the chapter is talking about. And the learning outcomes are, um, on one hand, number one, one is great representation of Pacific Islander actors and many Pacific Islander stories, but they, some of them are invisible. Two, environmental life, okay? They show environmentalism, that's great but then they also show it the Pacific uh, Island life in concepts that depoliticizes it, particularly in Hawaii now. Three, Moana is not your typical Disney princess. And four, don't dress up as Maui as his cultural appropriation, particularly his, his kind of uh, tattoo outfit. So again, this is my last slide. Please email me any questions and do not email me through Canvas. So have a wonderful day and I hope to see you one day again. And we turn this off.